I'm, I'm, I'm going to be giving uh, stuff away. So pay attention and you, and you may win something, all right? What? Is it under the chair already? Yeah. I'm going to give you away this book, my phone, <laughs> some t shirts and stuff. So, all right. Still have some minutes to start. Any questions before we start? What are we going to learn today? What are we going to learn today? Today we're going to learn how to do deep learning with Apache Spark. <laughs> <laughs> It's a secret. Don't, don't tell anyone, please. <laughs> Where are you from? Venezuela. Venezuela. Yeah, I'm far away from here. No, I, I came from Mexico. It's still far away. <laughs> what, sorry? It's about the package that allow us to create deep learning with Apache Spark and something I created too. By the way, the, uh, all of this, it, this will be like theory and code and all of the code will be, it's already on GitHub. Uh, I'm gonna give you the link very soon so you can just follow along or just watch it later. The slides are not there yet because <laughs> For some reason, they're not okay. I'm, 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 I'm going to change them and put them on the repo. So we have two minutes. <clears throat> hmm. I have stickers too and more stuff, so in the end, Please come to me, and the first ones here are going to win some stickers and stuff. Don't run. <laughs> I even have some, like, camera, camera stuff, too, to block it. So I don't know when I have so much stuff. All, right. all this, of, yeah, all, all right now. This is the best session ever. <laughs> Uh, I have one that says, who's your data? So that's kind of the thing I have. Or stuff like data to the people. I have some Hadoop ones. Yeah. I have some for like women too, like data women. That's it. I don't have any more genders out here, so. <laughs> All right, we have one minute. I, I actually overslept. I woke up at nine. I'm sorry. I wanted to go to every to everything and your talk to. I'm so sorry. I was not there. I was sleeping. <laughs> I'm super jet lagged, so I'm sorry. Still. All right. I'm 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 gonna start right now. So hello everyone. I'm so happy to be here with you. And um, first question for everyone here. Who knows Spark? Who knows Apache Spark? Okay, who's been coding with Apache Spark? Who's been doing deep learning with Apache Spark? Awesome, no one. All right. <laughs> so everything here will be new for you. All right. So what you learned today? That was the first question that, that I was asked. So first, why would you be doing uh, deep learning with Apache Spark? What is Apache Spark? If, if you don't know it, I'm, I'm going to tell you here what, what's Spark. What you need to know about the learning for this talk, it's almost nothing. Uh, MLlib, that is the library for doing machine learning with, with Spark. Deep learning with, with Apache Spark and next steps. So this is the link to the GitHub repository that every code is, is, is in there. I have some information too. So if you want to follow along, just take a photo or copy it right now. I'm going to give three seconds. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what would you be doing deep learning on Apache Spark? Anyone have anything to say about this? 
What, sorry? Well, that, that's a good answer. Someone else? Parallelize. Parallelize. Scale. Scale. Okay, good. All right. So those are great answers, and that's actually one of the things why we're doing Spark, uh, deep learning with Spark is because Spark is an awesome framework to distribute your computations in a cluster. It's so easy to do it, and, and you have an API for Python, for Scala, for Java, and R. And it's becoming a standard uh, uh, in, I, I think, in every country right now and in every company. And it will be amazing to add the, the great stuff of deep learning to Spark, right? So there are parts of, the, of deep learning that are very hard, that uh, like uh, calculating your, your, your parameters for your networks. Sometimes that can be very computationally expensive. And it will be amazing to distribute that process into a cluster, all right? And I think if I, Spark right now is the, the easiest way to distribute your, your, your workload in a cluster. So I'm gonna show you here a, a package created by Databricks, the, the, the creators of Apache Spark, that will allow you to do this, all right? First, we need to know, if you don't know what Spark, uh, the, the basics of Spark. So what is Apache Spark? Uh, before going there, I, I created this, this uh, it's, it looks kind of weird, but I created this timeline uh, for the history of Apache Spark. You can find it in one of my blog posts. And the, the beginning for me was the 1998 paper from, from Patient Brain for Google. Like the search engine paper is an amazing paper, check it out. Because that was the paper that in the end uh, translated into MapReduce. And MapReduce is what we know right now, like the beginning of big data for real. And um, there were some issues with MapReduce. Uh, first one, uh, Yahoo created Hadoop, like the open source version for MapReduce. Uh, but the issue here was that it ran on disk, okay? So it was not that fast. I mean, it, it was an awesome framework, but not that fast. And in 2009, there was a guy called Matei Sahira, an awesome guy, and he created his thesis on a new way of doing map reduce in memory. And he called this paper RDDs, or Resilient Distributed Datasets. Uh, this paper, you can find it online, and, and his thesis too. And it was the beginning of Apache Spark. A Spark began to grow inside of Berkeley and other schools, and then and then, and, and then Apache was like, okay, I need to have this on my portfolio. And then it became a, a, a open source Apache Foundation project. In just two years later, or one year later, it became one of, one of the most important packages for, for, for Apache. And right now is the, the big data framework with more, with more contributions in the world, all right? Um, I, after that, I think the, the next part that interested us for this talk is that in 2017, last year, the guys from Databricks created something called uh, Deep Learning Pipelines. And Deep Learning Pipelines was the beginning of this, uh, uh, this history of Spark and Deep Learning. So what's Apache Spark? In simple words, it's a fast and general engine for large-scale data processing. Okay? It's general because you can do with it a lot of stuff like SQL distribution, or machine learning, or, or graph analysis. Uh, it, has, it has an API for Python, it's called R in Java, and it's awesome, all right? So Apache Spark, uh, one of the other good things about it is that it connects very easily with your, with your stuff that you have right now on your, on your company, like SQL, uh, like uh, SQL Server, or MySQL, or Postgres, or Cassandra, or, or HBase, and you can distribute your computations in a, in a Mesos cluster or Jarn cluster, Caldera. So uh, this was because they didn't want uh, so much change. But like if they create something new and you need something completely new to distribute your, your, your computations, it will be very annoying for people to actually go there. So they made it uh, very easy for people to, to adapt this new technology for their companies. And normally, you will run it on a Cloudera server with Yarn, and you will interact with it with Jupyter. 
You can also interact with it uh, with your IDE or whatever, but I'm going to show you here how to do it with Jupyter. So Spark has a core that is written mostly in, in, in Scala here uh, that has all the, the, uh, the instructions to transform your, your data into a distributed fashion. And it has several components that are very important for this, like Spark SQL to distribute your SQL code in a cluster, Spark Streaming to work with streaming data, uh, MLlib to work with machine learning, and GraphX to work with graphs. We're going to focus today on MLlib. Um, Spark has three main data abstractions. The first one was the RDD. And these RDDs is the one, like, they're, they're collections, they're distributed collections of, of JVM objects, all right? So they will, run, they, they will run on your cluster and they will distribute your computation. And you can uh, store in RDDs arrays, strings, objects, whatever you want, okay? And they, they basically work in a transformation action uh, paradigm, so you can change them all the time, and then when you run an action, they will actually change. They're, they're, Unmutable, so you need to save another one if you really want to have the changes in a new, in a new RDD. Uh, after the RDDs, the data frames were created, right? And the data frames were like what well, we know about pandas or R, but they're, they're distributed too. Um, right now, in, since Spark 2.0, the data frames are a type of data sets. And data sets are like uh, data frames, but with types. They only work with Scala and Java, so we're not going to use them here. Um, and so you know that data frames are a type of data set of row. They're very cool and they're optimized. So it, they're like, uh, you have a, a, a project called Catalyst, and that will help you to run your code even faster with, with, in, a, in a cluster. It's like your, your tiny compiler for Spark. All right, so let's go to fun fundamentals of Apache Spark. How would you start a Apache Spark uh, code? The first thing you need to do is to create a Spark context. Right now, it's actually called a Spark session, but this is something that will connect your, your Spark code in Python with the JVM. And, and in this, you will be getting access to the cluster, all this, the, this late node and, and the master node. If you see here in, in blue, we have Python code, and in something like cream color, uh, you, you have the, the Java stuff, and Py4j is the library that will connect Python with Java. Uh, the, shell py, the, the shell and, and Optimus, something I'll show you later, will create for you the Spark context and Spark session, but if you are running in a Jupyter Vanilla in, in installation or something like that, you will, you'll, need, you'll need to create a, a, a constructor for, for Spark. So as I told you before, they had different uh, contexts for Spark, like the Spark context and the SQL context and the streaming context. And since, since 2.0, they changed that to a Spark session. So you will only now you know, start a Spark session, and from there, you will start the other context. All right, so this is awesome. This is, yeah, one question. What's the context here? The context here is only to make available the, the functionality of connecting your Python code with the, with the cluster that is in Java. Because uh, Spark, in the end, the, the Python API is, is a wrapper from, for Scala in, in Java. So you will need a connection to it. And because the, the cluster will be running in, in a JVM, and you will need something to, to connect both. It's like a socket. You will still need a, a, a Spark context because that will, that. Yeah. You will need it because you need something that a Spark needs to know where is my master? Where's my master? Am I running locally? Am I running on a cluster? So you'll need to define which, the master, which master you have and how to connect it with, with the cluster, actually. So in any language you are, in Scala, Python, R, or Java, you, you need a, a, a context. They work different. I mean, if you're in Python or Java or Scala, they're not the same, but you need them for all languages. Oh, you only Py4j for, for, for Java. No, no, you only Py4j. Py4j is only for connecting Python and Java. All right, so this is deep learning in three slides, okay? So, 
the deep in deep learning is not a reference of a deep understanding of stuff, all right? Or any kind of a different approach of understanding things. It's just the idea of success of, of successive layers of representation, all right? This is the deep part in deep learning. And the learned part in, in, in the context of, of machine learning and deep learning means an, an automatic search process for better, uh, for better ways to uh, study and present your, your data. This is why, because I tell this right now, because a lot of people think that deep learning uh, is, is a way of mimicking the way that our brain works, and that's not true. We actually have no idea how to connect the brain stuff with, with the deep learning stuff. It's just the name is just there, and it's very similar. But uh, the, the, the process of learning a way to, uh, to study the data and represent a better, in a better way so we can understand it, that's the, the learning part. And deep is only meaning that you will use in deep neural networks. So you have networks that have several layers. That's it. So deep learning is only the automatic search for presentations using deep, 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 uh, deep neural networks. So uh, I, I, I say this, I mean, I'm not saying anything specific here, just to, to, to have your context about what's deep learning, and we're, we're going to use it like this. We're not going to create neurons here in our code and stuff. We're only be creating uh, like really high-level things with, with Park. All right, so MLlib. Who's used, who's used MLlib before? Okay, great. MLlib, uh, uh, it's an awesome library that uh, will help you to run your machine learning code in your cluster. And um, um, at the same time, it, it contains a lot of, of, of great algorithms uh, for, for regression, classification, uh, for running clustering and, and these different stuff. And is the, the, the machine library part of, of Spark. Right now, there's no specific plan to merge the deep learning part with MLlib but it's in the discussions of the community. Maybe that will happen in the near future, because right now, as, as I'm gonna show you, the Spark part, the, the, deep, the, the deep learning part, is, is in a different package in, in, in on, on GitHub, open source and stuff, but it's not connected to the actual uh, core of Spark. Uh, so you can run MLlib, whatever you want, on Hadoop, Mesos, Kubernetes, standalone in, in your cluster, and with different data sources. So I'm going to show you now the demo, uh, the, the demo. So I have like half an hour, so it's awesome. And this demo will cover uh, transfer learning with Spark. We'll cover how to apply deep learning at scale. We'll cover uh, how to use Keras in the in terms of flow with Spark too. And how to deploy your model in SQL, all right? So uh, as I told you before, uh, you can go now to the code and you will see this. Uh, this is everything I, I'm, I'm, I'm showing you here with more, with more information. This is actually in a blog post I did like two months ago. All right. So the first thing I want to show you, if you have no idea how MLlib works, and I'm, I'm going to show you some, uh, I'm not going to run uh, all of this. I'm going to run as, uh, just, just some parts so you have an, an idea how MLlib works. So if you, re if you want to start a Spark session, this is what you have to do. From, Sp from PySpark.sql.session, import Spark session, right? And when you do this, what you will ha and then you need to create two instances. One for Spark, this is the, one, the, the thing that will allow you to create data frames and stuff. And if you need to create something like, uh, like a, a, an RDD, you will be using the SC variable here. Sorry? No. If you don't config, I mean, there's a way of configuring Py uh, the, the notebook. So when you start a Python uh, uh, kernel, it, it will have all of this for you already. But and if you don't do that, you need to do this to be able to create the context. So here, uh, if, I click, if I type SC, I'm seeing the Spark context. And if I click on the UI, what? Okay, on, on the UI here, 
this is something very interesting where you will be seeing uh, some, uh, some processes that will be running which part, our, our, our jobs, our tasks, our, our environment. And I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to start. This, is, this was taken from some internet resources. So this is, this is not mine. <laughs> this is just to show you how to use Spark. So we're going to try to predict the, the probability of an infant survival. Uh, I mean, equal uh, born uh, death or, or alive. It's, 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 it's kind of sad, but it's machine learning too. All right, so the first step we're going to do is to read the data. And I really recommend that if, you, if, if you're using Spark, to create your schema by hand. I mean, this is very important. Uh, you can uh, infer your, your, your schema with Apache Spark too, but I would recommend for you to, uh, to, 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 to type it. It's not that hard. It's, you only do it once, and, and you will do that if you're in SQL too. So right now, I'm, I'm defining which type of variables I want here, like this is the name of the variable, and this is the type of the variable. And these types here are the Spark types, and I imported those for here, from, from here, all right? So after this, I'm going to, I'm going to be creating a struct type, a struct field. This is kind of weird. Uh, so we can have, uh, so we can assign each one of these names with n type, and defaults here means that it cannot be nullable, right? So, uh, okay, so then, then I'm, I'm going to read the data, like read.csv. It's very simple, very similar to pandas or, or, or R. And bridge transform is the data set. Okay, I'm going to say the header is true, and I want to have the schema. So this will be happening, and it worked. So we have here if the, the show function will, will allow you to see the data frame. It's, it's terrible. But it's there. <laughs> um, so you can see something about your, your, your data set. Um, and um, you, you can select stuff with dot .select. It's like SQL code. Uh, something like for me, Spark, uh, now I only use Spark. I, I, I don't use Pandas anymore. I think it's so much easier if you come from SQL to use Spark because it's more, it's, it's more natural for you to do the, the selections and filters and group bys and stuff. And the other good thing is that you can run this code on your computer or your cluster, and the same code will run. All right? You don't need to, to think about how would I be running this on my cluster after creating the, the, the experiments on your computer. So right now, I'm not going to explain anything, everything here. I'm just going to tell you that I'm going to create a one whole encoder for one of the variables. I hope you know what's that. And then uh, something very important. Spark works in a way that it only understands uh, stuff for predicting if you put all the variables in one single column and you create a vector with that. That means that if you want to, to predict a, a, a y with some variables, you need to transform these several columns into one column with a vector and you have any every one of those informations here. Like if, we, if, we, if, if, if you have three columns and one here, you have one and two, three here. So you will create a new column with a, with a vector, say like one comma two comma three. So it's like you're assembling a vector here and you need that for Spark. So this is a code to, to do that and I'm gonna call that features. So for running, I'm gonna run a simple regression here but it's actually a classification because it's religious regression. And I'm going to try to predict if an, if an infant will be alive at, at report, all right? So I'm going to import it. And then I'm going to be choosing here some random, uh, some random values for my parameters for the model. And I'm going to be running it. This is the, the, the label I want to predict, all right? And then there's, there, there comes the notion of a, of a pipeline. Who've used, who've used a pipeline before in, in their life? For scikit-learn or whatever. So pipelines are, are, are very cool ways of, of expressing your, work, your machine learning workflows. And the, the people at Spark copied it from the scikit-learn uh, community. So in here, what I'm telling the code is to encode the data, create the features, and then run the least regression. 
okay? And I need to import the pipeline part here. So after I do this, and I'm gonna be uh, splitting my, my train in, in training and test my data set so you, so you have less overfitting. And then you fit, you fit and transform your data, all right? This is very similar to scikit-learn or something like that, all right? So you fit your data, yeah. Yeah, you, you put the, the steps. The step, I want to encode my data. I mean, this can be as long as, as, as you want. All the processes for, uh, for indexing and creating features could be here in, in the pipeline. And they're cool because when you want to, to run a new data frame to that pipeline, you only need to do something like pipeline.fit. So you will only be creating this once, right? So I'm running the, the yeah. Can we please board, speak louder? They're, they're actually objects. If you check it out here, I'm importing the classes here, and I'm instantiating the classes with an object. So they're objects that's, that tells Python how to do it. And, and in here, in the pipeline, I have these three objects, actually. All right? They're, they're, they're variables. So uh, you run the fit on your training set, and you run your, your test on your, te on, on your test set, and we wait for several minutes. No, this will, this will be very fast. And then, that's it. So you have your model. You, you even have something called to pandas because it's awful to see the show thing. So if you don't have that much big data sets, you can do this with to pandas. And at the end, what you will see is that uh, Spark created these features I, I, I told you, where you have one column with all the information, and you have the, the raw prediction, the probability, and the actual prediction, right? If we want to measure how well we did, we're going to do a, a binary classification evaluator, and I'm going to measure the, the area on the rock. And not, not that bad, right? It's 74%. So this was the idea. And, and with this idea, they created the, the, the deep learning uh, library. And we're going to go there right now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this. Still have time, great. So I'm going to show you here something uh, very interesting. And uh, I'm going to be doing some, uh, some classification of images with, with Spark. All right, I'm going to be classifying flowers, because why not? And to, uh, one of the bad things right now of this, uh, of this project that it's not pip installable or content installable. You, you need to import it like a Spark package. Um, luckily, I found a way of doing this very easily without uh, running, changing your, your JSON for your Jupyter or, or changing your, your kernel or changing your environment. You only have to do this. If you need uh, one package for Spark, you only have to import OS. And then you have to change this one here, the PySpark submit Argos. If you do this, I'm going to be uh, selecting here the, from, from Databricks Spark Deep Learning 1.1.1 for Spark 2.3. For, for Spark and here it is. So that's, uh, I did that so when I start my Spark session, I have all the deep learning stuff already there for me. So when I do this, the first thing that it will do is that it will go to the internet. If you don't have internet, this won't work, all right? You will need to go to the internet and download the package and then put it inside of the context of Spark. So um, uh, I, I, I also uploaded the, 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 the flower photos uh, for the repo, so you can uh, do this exact same thing, all right? So this simple code is to show you some examples of the, of the flowers we have. They're, they're very beautiful. We have tulips, we have daisies, and we're going to try to run a code to predict it, what, what's a daisy and what's a tulip, all right? You don't need GPUs to run anything here. I'm, I'm going to be running all of this in, in, in my computer. And I have an i5, Intel. What, sorry? You use GPU? I mean, you don't, you don't it, it depends on what you're going to do. I mean, if you're going to use transfer learning and stuff, you don't need GPUs for, for nothing, maybe. I mean, if you're going to train a model from scratch, you're going to need a lot of money. And you're going to need GPUs. Uh, but, but we're not doing this here. 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how to transfer the learning for other models that Google created into this to predict if something is a flower or a daisy or, or, or a tulip. I mean, I'm, I'm not training this from scratch, right? So, uh, since Spark 2.3, we have a way of reading with Spark images. All right, this is very new for Spark. And it's awesome because you don't read the actual image, you will read it and it will transform it as, uh, to this vector for pixels and stuff that you normally will do with pre-transformation of your images. It'll do that for you, all right? And it's very easy. You only have to say, uh, you have to in, in import the image schema and tell, I want to read all the images from this site, from, from this uh, uh, folder, all right? And it will go there and it will read all the different uh, uh, flowers for you. And I'm gonna run it right now, it's just very fast. And this is just a sample just to show you how, how will it work. And yeah, it, start, it started Java right there because it, what it did there is I, it, in, when I did this, it called the Spark Deep the, the Learning Library. All right, so we have this uh, and it, tell, in, in, it has some, in some information about my image. So here I'm showing you um, something very similar to, one, to the thing I did before. Uh, it has some differences because I'm, I'm trying to do more custom reading for my data so it can run faster here right now. And then I'm gonna be splitting on training and test for tulips and for daisies, all right? Uh, if you have, if you see three stuff here, it's because I'm really, I, I don't have time to run the whole uh, code for all the flowers. And I'm, I'm gonna use like 80 flowers to create a model, all right? Okay, so I'm gonna run this right now. And let's see how many, uh, I think less than, than 80, like 40 flowers. So here it's telling me some warnings, uh, it, it's okay. Just wait for a little bit. And if you want to see what Spark doing, you can go to localhost 4040, and you have the, the UI here. If you click on, on show stream, you can see exactly what Spark's doing. You have the DAC here, you have the, the uh, what's happening with, with everything. You can even click on each one of these and see everything in detail, all right? When you are more familiar with Spark and, and how, and you will be doing this a lot to improve and optimize your code. All right, so it's not working yet. I'm gonna wait here for a minute. Okay, it's running and running and running. Do you have BGG 16, you have BGG uh, 19 too, I think. You have ResNet 50, you have Inception B3, and you have your basic models. Yeah. But you can also use models from the Keras library. I'm, I'm gonna show you that how to, if you have a model for yourself that you trained before and you want to distribute it in, in, in Spark, you, you can do that too. Can, can we change the traits for the last You can change it, but you need to, uh, uh, you, you will use, I mean, in here, I'm only using like the, the, uh, um, the simple stuff, but down below, I'm gonna show you how to up upload your H5 file. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is so high level that you will not, you, you will have no idea of what you're doing right now. Because let's see this code right now. Let, let me give you an example. You have something called the Deep Image Featureizer, all right? And this is all you need for running deep learning with Spark right now. Yeah, Inception V3, yes. I'm, we're not changing anything of, of B3 right now. You can do it. In here, I'm, I'm, I'm using the model as it comes, all right? And what I'm doing here is I'm saying I want the images and I want to output the features. This thing here works like you have now all the features to predict an image, but you need now an MLlib part, a decision tree, a logistic regression uh, to be able to predict an A label. If you go here and see the code with more detail, I put some labels to tulips. I said tulips are gonna be one, and, um, and daisies are gonna be zero. 
So it's like, it's like a, a, a basic problem of, of uh, classification. So, yeah. Yeah. And then we just and series and one. Yeah. That's that's one of the things you can do. And um, I don't know we have time to run this because I'm, I have like 15 minutes, and it it takes like two minutes per per um, per per cell. But I I run it before for you to see it. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating the featureizer for the deep images, then a logistic regression with some parameters here. Uh, I mean, I'm using here the, uh, the, the basic stuff because I know that this will uh, output something called label to predict. And I did that here, you see? I called that, uh, that, that label, but I, I could change it. Now, what I'm gonna do is create a pipeline like, like before. In the pipeline, what it will have is the featureizer and then the regression, all right? And then you will only do uh, p.fit exactly as before. You pass the training data set, and then and you have it. Then you have your model. And you can uh, also evaluate your model, and this is the, the thing we got, right? I'm showing you here a, uh, I, I created this, this, this UDF to show you uh, uh, how well this, this actually did. Because this, is, this was supposed to be a one, but it took it as a zero. You see here, it was, uh, 0 0.8, so actually a 1. This was okay. 0.4, 0 is okay. 0 0.61 is okay. So this is like a, a comparison to the actual label and what we got. And uh, so that's the first part you, you can do. You can even do something more simpler, and it's called the deep image predictor. In the deep image predictor, you only pass uh, a data frame, and that's it. You don't need a, a, a MLLib part. You only need this. You only need the image predictor. And this is the same. You read the, the, you read the images here, all right? And then you say, this is the, the, the input column, this is the predicted labels, and the model name. And I want to de decode it, the, the predictors too and have the top K10, all right? So when you do this, this is, this is a, tra a, a transformer, actually. Not, you don't need to fit anything here. As you run it, you only need to run transform, and that's it. But th there's a difference between both. So if you see here below, this will give you a probability of, for it to be zero or one. In here, it'll do something very different. You know that in, in Inception v3, you have uh, a specific types of, of, of images that, that, were, that, were, that were classified, like, I don't know, uh, if, like dog or, or house or flower or daisy or bee. And there are like 10,000, I think. I don't remember it. And 10,000, okay. So, and I'm, sh I'm just choosing here the first 10. Because if you see here, um, in, the, in the Inception B3 code from, from ImageNet, you don't have tulips. So, the, this is the images I'm trying to predict, all right? Like two daisies and one tulip, all right? If you go, Below here, the first one, the first one is the the tulip, but it has no idea what's a tulip, so it's a it's a picket fence, so not not, not that good, but not that bad. And but for the other ones, it said Daisy, okay, for with 95% of of, of 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 accuracy, and Daisy again, okay. So this is because when you're doing transfer learning, you cannot know what the model did, didn't know before, okay? So you're only trying to, 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 to classify things that it, it, it saw before. And here is a 40% chance to be a, 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 a yeah. expense, yeah. This is the highest one, thank you. This is the, the highest one we have. If you see here, we have lower ones. So this is weird because it got better for picket fence than, than for daisy. Like this flower look more like a picket fence than a daisy, all right? And this is like deep learning, all right? All right, so I'm gonna show you here something for, if you come from Keras, and the, the, the question was this. So you have some weights for your model. This is doing the same. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna import Inception B3, and I'm gonna be exporting the, 
the weight of that. But if you have your own model with your own weights, you can save it as an H5 file. And then from Spark, you will be doing something with something called Kira's Image File Transformer. All right? And with, the, and, and with this, you can, th this is the, the actual code here, you will be passing your model file. And you will be distributing in your cluster your Keras code. So your, your, your model, sorry. So this is quite awesome because without thinking that much, you will be only saving your H5 file and then di distributing this in your cluster. And so uh, this is only an image loader for uh, defining the, the, the sizes for the images uh, and to process the image too. So, uh, okay. And I'm going to show you something else, and it's this here. Uh, let's say you don't have that H5 model, and you, you want to create a Keras model. And after that, you want to distribute your Keras model in your cluster. You can do that too with Spark. How? Here I have my, my Keras model, very simple. And wh what I'm doing here is I have, I, I'm, I'm going to have some sequential, with the sequential API, two dense layers, and, and that's it. And then I'm going to be sa saving this model, all right? This model I created. Then something called Keras Transformer, or Keras Transformer, you will have, what's the name of the input columns, the output you want to create, and the model file, okay? And then you can run this on, on your cluster. This is a very easy way to distribute your Keras code in the cluster. Yeah. It will be the data frames, because uh, one thing I, I, I didn't mention is that in Python, the RDDs are way much slower than in Scala and in, in Java. So uh, if you're using ML, uh, you have MLlib, right? But inside of MLlib, there's ML, and it's like the data frame version of MLlib. And, and all you see here is working with ML because it's more fast and it's actually better for optimizing. I, I cannot hear you, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, all these are running as a single job, right? How do we say these are the number of processes or jobs that need to be. So if I actually run this, you will see uh, a lot of things here, and you can see the jobs, and these and jobs in this part I, are divided in tasks. And when you see the task, you can actually see what's happening in the cluster and under the hood. Yeah, can we control that, the number of tasks or jobs? Can you what? Control the number of tasks or jobs. Con, con control, configure. Oh, control, it's not that easy. I mean, uh, uh, Spark has a way of working, and you cannot say, I want to run this in two, uh, in two tasks. It's not, it's, not that, it's, not, it's, it's not that way. What you can actually do, and if you see here in the beginning, uh, I create some repartition here. So it can divide the, uh, in more, in, in, in even more tasks, because it, it, that's even faster for some type, of, some type of, of, of data. It's not that easy to control how many tasks will have a, a, a job will have. Thank you. All right. So, um, okay, we're, we're here now. And now the last part. The last part, uh, five, thank you. So the last part is, what if you want uh, a, a, a person has no idea of deep learning to use your code? In Spark, you can create, and with the deep learning part, you can create a SQL function for your deep learning code. And then someone else can do select, and pass the function and the data, and it will have uh, deep learning in SQL. So this is how you do it. I'm, I'm gonna actually run this code. So in here, what I'm doing is that, uh, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna work, right? Uh, maybe it won't because I have to run some stuff. Oh, I have to run this, I think. Okay, so if it doesn't run, it's okay. Um, I'm creating a UDF. In, in, in Spark, a UDF is called a, a, a user defined function. And what I'm doing here is, okay, it's running, I think. And what I'm doing here is after doing that, I'm gonna register this, uh, this, this, uh, mm, this code 
for, for, for Kira's distributed uh, as, a, uh, as a function for SQL. And then afterwards, when someone else is, is using my code, he, he doesn't know about how to use this or deep learning or anything, but he knows Spark and SQL, okay? If, 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 if he knows how to do it, you, he only has to do this. Read the data, register the data as a, as a temp table, all right? Yeah, so it's working there. And, and then, this is how, what he has to do. Select inception B3, with, this is the name of my function I created, all right? An image here is the name of the, the column, all right? And, and this is uh, just an alias as prediction from sample images. So this worked, okay? So I can do this, I can read, I can, I can read it here. I'm registering a, a temp table, uh, but something else happening here. All right. So I'm, I'm gonna finish this uh, with, with one more example because I'm running out of time. But this is not that, that, that pretty right now because this, is, this will show the 10,000 types of images from ImageNet and the probability for each one of uh, to be. Like this is very unlikely to be an image like, of, like this one. I have no idea which, which, which is this one. I have to map each one of these uh, indexes with the images of, for ImageNet. So right now it's not that pretty. But you can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna be closing this. I'm gonna go to the last example. So the last example is with Optimus. Optimus is a library that I created with one friend in, from Venezuela and with a team uh, in Iron, our, our company there, that will help you to run Spark uh, very easily. And it has a lot of different functions for you that will allow you to do machine learning, deep learning, features of transformation, data cleansing very, very easily. If, if you go to the, to, to, to the repo, you have here some information about Optimus, how to install it, how to load data, you, you can ro uh, you have to load data with it, you can clean data, and you have dot rows and clean, uh, dot calls, lower data transformation, you have how, a way to remove characters, to drop columns, rename stuff, apply, and you can run machine learning very easily, uh, data profiling stuff. And I'm, I'm going to be showing you here only the deep learning part of, of Optimus, all right? So the first thing is you have to import Optimus from, from Optimus. And when you start it, you need to say DL equals true. So you will, you will want to download all the deep learning parts of Optimus, okay? And this is the same example as before. I'm gonna be reading the data right now, okay? The same as before, I'm gonna say lit here one and lit zero tier. So, oh man. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go back. All right, I think this worked. So in Optimus, this is how you have to work with stuff. You will never be using fit and transform again. You will be only using like very intuitive stuff. So from Optimus, deep learning, image classifier LR is the first thing I show you there. Like you have your image uh, feature predictor and then you have your, your regression and then you have your, your data frame here. This is all you have to do with Optimus and it, this will create for you two things, your model and your data frame with the predictions, okay? I don't think I have time to run it, but this is how you will do it. And you can uh, evaluate it as simple. op.dl.evaluate image classifier and you pass the test and the model and that's it. And the part when you only have to pass the, the, uh, um, uh, the folder with the images is op.dl.imagePredictor. And this will give you everything for you. And in, the, in a better way, is it will only give you the best one. If, if, if you remember, we have the top 10 weird stuff there uh, with the predictions. You can only choose one here and it's the best one. This is the one you want to see, okay? Right now, I'm, I'm in the process of transforming everything you have on Spark to Optimus. Uh, right now, you have random forest like this with one line of code, op.ml.randomforest, and you have stuff like in, 
uh, uh, string indexers and all with one line of code is much simpler than using the actual Spark API. And you have more information for running this uh, uh, in a data, data cleansing uh, idea. So the, the goal for Optimus is to bring the best out of Pandas and, and, and Dplyr to Spark, all right? So this is it for me. I'm going to be uh, telling you some next steps. So uh, the first thing is that if you want to see this, uh, this code again and run it for yourself, this is the, the actual code. Uh, I'm going to be running a, something called Data Science Live with Randy Lau and Kristen Kerr. Uh, our second session is September 6th, and when we be, and when we're going to be answering your questions uh, for how to do data science and what's data science or whatever you want, all right? We have a, 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 a webinar last week on how to get a job in, in, in data science. Can we do some real-time analysis on this uh, concept, what you have told? Suppose some data is coming from Kafka, then we will You can do it with Spark. With Optimus, you, you cannot do right now anything with streaming, but with Spark, it's very easy to do stream analytics. So we cannot import from Kafka. Yeah, we can do. We can do that. Can do yeah. So in one last part, uh, you can. Uh, I'm I'm running a course with Matt Dancho for. It's called R with R for data science with uh, data science with for R. Uh, sorry, data science for business with R. And this is a coupon code that will only work until se September 5th. If you want to have this code, uh, this will, it's a 20% discount for, for that course. I'm creating right now the Python version of this course. That, that will be, uh, I think, for next month, uh, the first chapter will be released. And I'm, I'm going to be showing how to do deep, uh, deep learning uh, with Spark and how to do with Spark machine learning, Python. I'm going to use Lime and all this different stuff, all right? Lastly, uh, I want you, to, if you, if, if you like, to subscribe to our channel called Data Science Office Hours. We're running there every time to time uh, discussions about data science, uh, what to do, what not to do, and and that's it. Thank you very much. What? Yeah. So I have the book, and I have one question for you guys. And who answers first? It's going to get the book, all right? All right. So this is the question. This is the question. <laughs> Which types of flowers I was predicting in Spark right now? <laughs> so that's a bad question, maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> I have no idea who answered first. I have jet lag, of course. So the uh, so maybe something more complex, more complicated. So it is, it is. so. Um, what's the thing we need to do with Spark to be able to do machine learning? The the first thing we have to do. No, for for machine learning. I have a laptop. What? Sorry. But you need to do something particular to be able to run, to run it. <laughs> to be able to actually run your code for, a, for some variables. You need to do something. <laughs> Assemble it. Assemble it. All right, that's it. Assemble it, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if you want more stuff, just come here right now, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs>